ang babasahin po natin ay the same as what we read two weeks ago, Isaiah chapter 9, at babasahin lang natin from verse 1 hanggang verse 7. Isaiah chapter 9. Simulan ko na po, verse 1. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed, as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Sebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden, in the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior sandals from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Yung joy na mararanasan dahil sa paglaho ng kadiriman ay magaganap dahil sa birth of a child. At dito, which is the third reason kung in continuation of our last scripture reading, itong third reason ang nag-highlight ng five significant truths about Jesus Christ. And the text speaks specifically of the kingly office of Christ. Now, natapos tayo sa first and second truth last time, which is His identity and His authority. At nandito na tayo sa third, which is His character. Now, very instructive itong four titles dito sa verse 6 na binasa natin na nagde-declare ng truths about the nature, person, and dignity of this one born, the king, at nakafocus particularly sa kanyang deity. Now his first title, he is the wonderful. He is the wonder of a counselor. Bagamat translated ito sa dalawang separate titles, pero sa Hebrew construction, it links them together as one. Yung salitang wonder or wonderful ay tumutukoy sa pagiging marvelous, extraordinary, at incomprehensible. It typically describes the acts of God o yung mga gawa ng ating Diyos. Yung salitang counselor naman ay always associated sa wisdom. Now, significantly, ginamit ni Isaiah itong dalawang salita ito, yung wonderful at counsel, na tumutukoy sa Lord of Hosts in Isaiah 28 verse 29. Kaya itong title na ito ay tumutukoy sa deity ng son, identifying him as the wisdom of God, which in itself is a messianic title. Now refer to Proverbs chapter 1, chapter 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. Now the second title, he is the mighty God. You literally, we translate to God a hero. Itong particular word na ginamit sa Diyos ay lagi tumutukoy sa kanyang deity or pagiging Diyos. At yung salitang mighty or literally hero here refers to his power and his being the champion of his people. His rule is irresistible and it is, the well, it is for the welfare of his kingdom. Now the third title, he is the everlasting father. 
Now, itong title na ito ay nag-cause ng confusion dahil paano nga naman magiging father yung son. Now, the words literally says, Father of Eternity, meaning everlasting Father, Father of Eternity, and should not be taken as a Trinitarian statement since it is vital to maintain this distinction in person between God the Father and God the Son. Now, the term Father here is a honorific title applied to those in various positions of authority. The Hebrew word designates the one in authority over eternity. So rather than confusing the Trinity, the term appropriately applies to the Godhead, since eternity is one of the incommunicable perfections of a deity. This is another declaration that the birth of the Emmanuel was at the beginning of the Son's existence. The eternal Son of God became man. Now, lastly, but not the least, the fourth title, he is the Prince of Peace. Now, yung Hebrew word na prince ay hindi tumutukoy sa isang king in waiting, yung kagaya ng uh, earthly king na yung prince magiging king lang kapag namatay na yung hari, kundi isang sovereign administrator. He is the administrator of peace. He has the authority to bring peace. The title unquestionably points to his work of reconciliation, whereby he took it upon himself that chastisement that we deserve with a view of achieving our peace with God. Isaiah 53 verse 5. So may the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning.